Hey, I'm Kenneth Weidstra. I'm a professional photographer here in Colorado. Welcome to another one of my weekly or bi-weekly photo chats about gear. I use all things gear. Real use experience. So today I'm going to talk about, I've had a love affair with the Rolly 35 for many years. And this little case, little camera, it's a great steampunk camera that will always get attention, will always get people to respond. And this is a little Rolly 35 SE, which has a, a Sonar 40 millimeter 2.8 lens. And what I like most about this is with glasses, I can see the whole finder. I can always see the whole viewfinder when I'm using this camera. And there are Leicas that I can't. And there are Canon rangefinders and Nikon rangefinders I use that I can't. And what this does lack is the ability to range, use a rangefinder to set focus. It doesn't have a rangefinder. It just has guest focus. So if I'm photographing you right now, I have to physically turn it to four feet because I can guess we're about four feet away. And if I'm shooting in a place where we're not shooting in the dark and I'm not shooting wide open, it's probably good enough, even if it were five or three feet. But if we're shooting in a place where it's critical, then I have to be a little bit more careful because if I'm shooting wide open, then of course depth of field gets more shallow. But this is the one I've been carrying in my pocket because for a pocket camera, it completely fits. The viewfinder is big. And I go in waves. You know I've talked about those Leica Barnack cameras, which I love to stick in my pocket. But when I go out to shoot street, I often bring a digital camera because I've long realized that street is a digital world the way I shoot street. But I also end up with sometimes a need to shoot a film photograph. If I see somebody, I meet somebody, I'm with a friend or a family member, that's when the film camera has to come out. And they made these in many different versions they made them with a 43.5 lens. This is one with a 2.8 lens that I picked up at a little estate sale. And it was an interesting little story. The, uh, the estate sale had a line of people going into an old pawn shop that was going out of business because the owner had passed away. And the estate sale company was coming in to clear out the place. And the person in front of me, by about four or five, people in line. He was a guy in Denver who buys a lot of cameras for resale. And I go to pick up the little cameras that I can use or teach with. And he went through and when I got to the area where the cameras were, he already had picked up most of the stuff that was the better choice cameras, which I'm not even sure what they were. I think there were some Nikons and some Pentax SLRs. But after he had walked away, I went through and I didn't see much and then I walked away and I came back and I saw like a piece of paper and under the paper that, that was, that paper was the instruction manual for this little Rolly. And this was priced, I think hundred bucks or something. And for a hundred dollars, I'm like, oh, I have to have a little Rolly with a 42.8 cause I've never had one of these with the fast lens. I've only had them with 3.5 lenses and it makes me take it more. It makes me want to take it out more. And it was a complete surprise that I found it only because he didn't look under the paper and neither did I at first. It was kind of put on a shelf in a way that made you think there was nothing there, which is a good example of keep looking. Once you think you're done looking, look further. I know I was at a estate sale one time and there was a Rolleiflex and inside the cases that were empty cases for sale, they weren't quite empty. There were Rolly accessories like, filters and lens hoods that nobody bothered to take out. And the cases were marked $10. And it's like they came with so many Rolly goodies. Always look further. Look inside the cases. Look underneath the things. Sometimes where you're not looking, you might find it. And the beauty of these cameras is they were designed to be as small as possible to hold film. There's room for a film, a take up spool, and the area for the actual exposure. And that's it, the shutter. And it's actually made in a way that it has to be 
the shutter has to be cocked for you to press the lens back in because once the shutter is cocked, it creates room for the lens to depress so that you can place it back into its little case, put it back in your pocket, and you're ready to go again next time. Wonderful, wonderful little cameras. And they have very soft metal on their top plate because I see them all the time and they're always dented. And I'm not sure who's swinging it around and hitting it into doorways, but if you do, you will dent it. And it may not affect anything. It may be working just fine. Dents don't always stop a camera from working, but if you're looking for one, definitely look for one that's not dented because that means it didn't take a hit. But you often see them with some dents on them. And I think it's one of the more fun cameras. It has a meter that doesn't work. I use it with Sunny 16. I've long ago realized that I could go outside on any sunny day and shoot 250 at F11 all day long and everything will work out. Because the things that are in the sun will be a little bit overexposed and the things that are in the shade will probably be properly exposed. So I'm always ready and overexposure is never a problem with film. It's only underexposure that's a problem. So 250 at 11 on a sunny day is your friend. If it's a little bit cloudy, bright like today, 250 f8, you can get a lot of photographs. And inside, as a friend of mine always said, you shoot wide open as slow as you dare. So if I'm shooting inside of a pub and it's kind of dark in there, I'm probably shooting at an eighth of a second at 2.8. Because I know if I've held a light meter up, it's never a 60 at 2.8 in a dark place. It's like an eighth or a fifteenth. But because it's got a little leaf shutter, that camera I can hold steady and it won't be too difficult to hold a camera like that for a slow shutter speed. So I have film in it now, I'm running it, and it's the camera that I've been using the last few weeks. And I'll tell you, the viewfinder is the biggest thing for me. From a glass is where I like being able to see the whole frame. And I never see the whole frame in those other rangefinders I have. I can use a diopter with a Leica, but if I want to see the whole frame, that's the one camera, despite the fact it doesn't have a rangefinder, that makes it so that I have a, a great view, a big giant view, bright and clear. And that's the biggest joy of using it. And that's why I've been taking it lately. Plus I picked it up at that estate sale and it's new and it's fun and it's always a little treat to find new cameras to inspire because cameras do inspire and having something new kind of changes the way we work a little bit. All right, that's today's photography talk. Hey, if you're enjoying these, hit the subscribe button. If you can support, hit the Patreon. I'll bring you more. We'll talk more photography. As always, here's the good light.